Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. So in this particular video we shall cover the syllabus orientation for the pharmacology practicals of the final year that is uh, the pharmacology lab 2 as per the CBCS pattern of uh, University of Mumbai. So before going into the details of the syllabus so this is the weightage which is uh, given uh, to this particular subject which is uh, having the code of BPHC 708L that is a laboratory okay so the credits which are allotted for this particular subject are two so as you all must be aware of the calculation of the credits for a particular practical is done by multiplying the number of hours by half so the credits for this particular subject is 2 that is when you clear this particular course you will be allotted with a credit of 2 the credit point of 2 now coming to the weightage for the internal and the end semester exam so as you are aware of it is uh, divided into two portions that is the internal assessment which comprises of the attendance the GLP which you follow or the results which you obtain then the viva wars which is uh, conducted by the instructor apart from which you also have the marks for the performance of your practicals and so on so these are the marks which are allotted on your day to day basis plus it will also include the internal examination which is also uh, known as a periodic test at a certain level so you will have an internal examination which is conducted uh, for this particular practical and at the end of the semester you will have the end semester examination so this will carry 40 marks so the total marks which are allotted for this particular course is 50 so coming to the course objectives so there are three objectives of this particular uh, practical the first one is uh, the practical training on uh, performing the bioassay uh, that is of two drugs that is acetylcholine and the atropine so at acetylcholine you all must be familiar about this particular drug acetylcholine which is actually a transmitter at the parasympathetic system okay so it's a cholinergic drug and the atropine which is an anticholinergic drug so it's an antagonist for acetylcholine at the muscarinic receptors okay so the bioassays for both these drugs uh, will be performed in this particular uh, course using the cochlea the next objective is demonstration of the oxytocin bioassay oxytocin bioassay which is carried out on an uterine preparation and the behavioral experiments such as analgesic skeletal muscle relaxant activity or locomotor activity and so on by using the interactive CDs okay, so these are demonstrations which are uh, uh, carried out with the help of certain uh, recordings or certain CDs then the third objective is information on the regulatory and toxicity guidelines then coming to the course outcomes so again there are three course outcomes okay. the first one is to define the bioassay then to list the types or the methods and applications of the bioassay which will be covered as a part of introduction then uh, 
perform in vitro bioassay using cork helium and record and calculate and interpret the unknown concentration of the given agonist or antagonist or a particular drug the second course outcome is observe the preclinical models which will provide the evidence on a particular drug or a lead as it is called as when when uh, it is new supposed to be newly introduced okay so these preclinical models they will provide the evidences on the pharmacological activities of this drug and lead and the third course outcome is relate to and apply the ethical or regulatory or the toxicity guidelines such as say ICH guidelines or OECD guidelines or CPCSA guidelines then the schedule Y as far as the drug or the lead testing is concerned by utilizing the preclinical animals okay so certain animal studies uh, relating to these guidelines also following the ethics while applying these particular drugs in the community okay. so these are the course outcomes then coming to the details of the syllabus so this particular syllabus of the practical is divided into three parts there are certain experiments which you will be performing in the laboratory there are certain demonstrations which will be carried out with the help of certain recordings on the chymograph or the uh, interactive CDs which are available and the third one is the toxicity studies so coming to the first part that is the experiments so there are two experiments which are supposed to be performed actually in the laboratory the first one is the bioassay of acetylcholine by using the suitable isolated tissue preparations for example cork helium can be utilized for this okay, so you all must have performed the drc of acetylcholine in your pharmacology lab one in your second year right so this is just an one step further to that so you are going to find out the unknown concentration of the test sample in this particular uh, part bioassay that is to find out the concentration of an unknown solution in a biological system right essays you all must have performed in your uh, analysis so this particular concept of bioassay is to carry out an essay in a biological preparation so isolated preparations like cork helium are utilized since sacrificing the animals is uh, banned so cork helium is an alternative which is available very easily in the slaughterhouse so you can obtain this cork helium and perform the practicals on this uh, particular part okay that is the helium of a cock or a chicken okay so bioassay of acetylcholine is the first experiment which can be carried out different uh, methods by utilizing different methods okay so as you'll be studying in the introduction the, what are the what what is a bioassay what are the applications what are the different principles or methods of uh, the bioassay so likewise there are interpolation bioassay the matching type of bioassay three point bioassay four point bioassay and so on multiple point bioassays so bioassay of acetylcholine can be carried out by a number of methods and similarly there is a second experiment which is supposed to be performed that is bioassay of atropine by using a suitable isolated tissue preparation so over here also cock ileum is ideal because atropine it is a blocker of acetylcholine at the muscarinic receptors okay so cock ileum can be utilized for this particular experiment so here you are finding out the concentration of an uh, antagonist so you need an agonist that is acetylcholine against which the action of atropine is study that is the inhibition of the response of acetylcholine is observed in this particular experiment okay so again this particular bioassay also can be carried out by different methods but uh, ideally atropine bias is done by utilizing the interpolation bioassay because it is quite tedious there are uh, a number of responses which needs to be recorded 
because it's an antagonist you may have to repeat certain responses okay so in the details of the experiments it will be very clear okay, how tedious it is to perform an bioassay of atropine okay so these are the two experiments which are supposed to be actually performed in the laboratory then the second part of the practical is the demonstrations that is with the help of chymograph recordings or the audio visual aids such as series which are available okay now this again uh, can be divided into two experiments the first one is the bioassay of oxytocin so oxytocin it is actually a, a hormone which is secreted by the posterior pituitary gland right so this uh, acts on the uterus so this particular experiment needs an uterine preparation so one animal will be required per student Okay, so this particular experiment is uh, categorized under demonstration. So here the certain recordings will be provided and you need to calculate the unknown uh, concentration. Okay. So you need not perform this particular uh, experiment in the laboratory. And the second part under demonstration is the behavioral pharmacology demonstrations or the simulated experiments by utilizing the CDs. So <clears throat> here you are going to study the uh, effects of certain uh, drugs which are acting mainly on the CNS. Okay. So there are five experiments uh, which can be performed under uh, this behavioral pharmacology. Uh, the first experiment under this is to study the effect of drugs on locomotor activity in the rodents by utilizing the actophotometer. Okay, so locomotor activity that is the uh, activity in which you check the movement of the animal so here by utilizing this instrument actophotometer you can check the locomotor activity of a particular drug whether it is having cns stimulant activity or cns depressant activity that can be found out by checking this locomotor activity okay so if it's having a depressant property obviously the movement of the animal will reduce and if the if, if the drug has CNS stimulant activity then obviously the movement of the animal will increase so that's how you can come to a conclusion so what type of drug it is the second experiment under this uh, behavioral pharmacology is to study the muscle relaxation property of the drug using the rotor or apparatus okay, so here again the animals ability to retain itself on a rotating rod is checked so once the muscles relax into the limbs of the animal it will fall off from that rod which is rotating at a particular speed so that's how you can find out whether your drug has muscle relaxation property okay. then the third experiment is to study the analgesic activity of the drug using an analgesiometer so whether the drug has the ability to abolish the pain that is the analgesic activity of a particular drug so for that purpose analgesiometer meter is used that is the tail flick analgesiometer or the hot plate analgesiometer any one of these can be utilized so we are going to utilize the tail flick analgesiometer for this particular uh, activity and the next experiment is to study the anticonvulsant activity of the drugs by using the maximal electroshock or the chemically induced seizures so convulsions and epileptic seizures epilepsy you all must have studied under your pathophysiology under the cns chapter okay so the drugs which are effective against the convulsions which are um, seen in an epileptic patients so such activity can be checked in the animals by two important models these are quite commonly utilized models of course there are many other but these are the ones which are used quite commonly that is maximal electroshock mes method wherein the shock is given to the animal okay and the certain phases are uh, seen or observed and the time spent by that animal in each uh, phases is recorded before the, uh, uh, the there are two groups actually so the time spent in each phases in the control uh, group animals is compared with the treated animals apart from this there is one more method by which this activity is commonly done that is the chemically induced seizures that is 
chemical is used to induce the seizures there are several uh, chemicals that such as cna stimulant drugs are available which can induce the convulsions out of which a most commonly used drug is the pentylene tetrazole so if you administer this pentylene tetrazole to the animals it will result in induction of the seizures in that animal okay and the next experiment is to study the phenothiazines induced catalepsy using suitable animal model okay so catalepsy can be induced by the phenothiazines because it induces the rigidity okay, similar to the parkinson's disease okay so such activity can be easily studied by inducing the catalepsy uh, by the drug phenothiazines which are actually antipsychotic drugs but due to, due to the uh, due to receptor blockage it can induce the parkinson's like condition so such uh, anti parkinson's activity can be checked by utilizing this particular model now the third part of the syllabus is the toxicity studies so here in you will be studying about certain guidelines that is uh, cpc sca guidelines and the oecd guidelines so these are the two guidelines which will be studying in brief actually the guidelines are quite vast so this first guideline cpcsa that is committee for the purpose of control and supervision on experiments on animal so this particular guideline it gives us detail about how the animals are supposed to be handled procured how they are supposed to be maintained what are the different conditions which are required to be maintained how an animal house should be what should be the location how should it be planned what are the different areas which are supposed to be available the anesthetics which are supposed to be used for the animals in case of any procedures so all these details about the animals while you handle them right from the procurement till the death of the animal and the disposal of the animal all the guidelines are provided in this particular cpcsc so there is a committee which has put forth these particular guidelines as far as the care and ethics of the animals are concerned apart from this there is one more guideline that is oecd guideline organization for economic cooperation and development so this particular guideline deals with the toxicity studies okay, so it uh, provides a different testing procedures which can be followed for the toxicity studies of different drugs or under study or certain chemicals so we'll be briefing about these oecd certain oecd guidelines not all okay then the second part is introduction to the acute subacute and chronic toxicity studies so depending upon the duration of the studies this can be categorized into acute even the exposure there is one time exposure there are multiple doses which are supposed to be um, administered in the animal so accordingly the toxicity studies which are carried out in the animal to test for the safety of a particular drug so these uh, can be categorized into three types that is acute subacute and chronic toxicity study so we'll be briefing about uh, each of these uh, toxicity studies okay, so this is to do with the syllabus of the pharmacology lab 2 which is divided into three parts experiments that is acetylcholine and the atropine bioassay these are the two experiments which are supposed to be carried out there are certain demonstrations and the toxicity studies thank you for watching